the people love Artem. They want to hear from him. He's kind enough to be joining us right now via the Magic of Skype. Artem, how are you? Well, good, Ariel. Thanks for having me. It is a, it is a, a, sorry, say that again. I said, this is my first time on ESPN. Thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute honor and, pl and, and pleasure, Artem. It's great to talk to you as always. So a very busy week for you. When did this all start? I know you told me in the past, before your last fight against Michael Johnson, that you know if you can't get the fight against Zubaira, you want it out. You even talked about getting released before all that went down. When did you start working on you know this release that you eventually got last week? Uh, you know, to be honest, I've been working on it for quite some time now. Like I did mention to you before, in the summer, you know, I had an opportunity to maybe leave and go elsewhere, but I really wanted a Zubaira fight, so I said, look, I'm going to stay there, take a pay cut, whatever it is, I'm going to stay and be there and get this fight and put this uh, right, put it the way it should be done. But now, obviously, after this whole incident took place, October 6th, I had my own fight with Michael Johnson. I, I just knew that he was going to be suspended for a long time, you know, just from talking to the people in the UFC, they, they, they were, you know, I heard that the reaction was not very, it was very bad, you know, for that incident on October 6th, and the punishments are going to be pretty severe. So I, I was expecting him, you know, to be suspended, uh, not maybe for a year, maybe a bit shorter, but I was still kind of trying to see, you know, what was going to happen. But then once it became obvious that, you know, I was not going to be able to get that fight anytime soon, I just thought, well, you know, if, if I can't get that fight and there's bigger paydays, awaiting me then you know why why not leave i mean at the end of the day all right i don't mean I, I don't want to interrupt you i want to hear what you're saying but unfortunately i can't hear you it sounds like you're underwater right now so we're going to call you on on your phone if you don't mind because you sound great but unfortunately i can't hear you so we're gonna we're gonna call you i want to hear that answer uh, we love to see artem but i want to hear him most importantly so we're going to reconnect with artem in a matter of seconds here and call him on his phone please stand by the skype connection was fine but i don't know why it sounded like he was underwater there that was strange and that's you know we got the nice shiny new studio here as you can see all the bells and whistles but skype is skype and as i tried to tell you in the past when you tried to blame me this is just the magic of doing things via skype although we can't do facetime as well these days that's a nice little new wrinkle that we have at our disposal but we'll connect with artem here in a matter of seconds artem lobov as i said now a free agent his last fight was against michael johnson uh, leaves with a 13 15 and one professional record one no contest as well of course a longtime friend teammate training partner sparring partner of one conor mcgregor a staple over at the sbg ireland gym and also the pride of not only russia but ireland as well and i see him talking online about uh, amir khan and Pali malinaji see him talking about kickboxing see him talking about bellator who of course has some kind of deal it seems with SBG so a lot of people gunning when you fight look at this point say what you will about the record he's a name and people want to fight him he became one of those guys like Michael Bisping where it seemed like every every featherweight in the company was calling him out and so I'm curious who he signs with and if he does sign with someone can he do MMA slash boxing slash kickboxing is that even possible you would think that at this point he'd be able to, you know, pick whatever he wants to do and sign with whomever he wants. I believe he's on the phone now, standing by. Artem, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Ariel. Okay, that's much better. Sorry about that, Artem. Um, it was good to see oh, you good. for a second over there, but I, I definitely want to hear what you have to say as well. So let me go back to that initial question because I really didn't hear your answer. Could you tell us, like, the timeline here, how you got this done? Yeah, so, uh, you know, after Michael Johnson's fight, obviously, you know, I, I kind of started looking when my next fight was going to be. And I already knew just from talking to the UFC that the punishment was going to be pretty severe, you know. I didn't really know how how long the suspension was going to be, but I knew, you know, I wouldn't be able to get that fight as of right now. So I thought, why, why not uh, go elsewhere? You know, this is, I mean, obviously UFC has always been the pinnacle of the sport, and, and for any fighter, it is a hell of an achievement getting into the UFC. But once you've done that, been there and done that, now it's all about making money. And it just turns out that, you know, there's more money for me to be made elsewhere. And, of course, I'm thankful to the UFC for that. It is the fact that I was a UFC fighter is a big, big, big part of the fact that I'm getting all these offers right now. Okay, so did they even try to convince you? Did they try to keep you? 
Uh, yeah, they, they they said to me they were offering, they were talking about the fight in Russia, potentially April. But, uh, you know, I, I, it wasn't really clear enough when, what, who, and, you know, it just didn't sound convincing enough. And, and like I said, the offers were really, really good. And the only fight that I really, really, really want in the UFC is Zubaira, and he can fight now. So it was a no-brainer for me um, to, you know, uh, to test the free agency and see how that goes. And how many fights did you have left on your deal? I had three fights left. Okay, um, so once you both agreed, okay, there, there's, there's only an opportunity to fight in April. Zubaira is not going to fight for a year. Did they put up much resistance, or were they pretty cool about it? Uh, well, I mean, you have to bear in mind that they had just given me a new contract. Ah, I yeah. had just renewed. I had four fights left on my old contract, and they gave me a new contract, still left the four fights on it, and bumped up my money, and, you know, you know, they gave me some other things, uh, beneficial things on it, like the time frame of the contract and all that. But uh, so, so obviously they weren't willing to give me another, you know, a new contract, just as they given me one already. So it was really a matter of, you know, either leave or, or stay with what I have, and I was and, uh, you know, I was lucky enough that they allowed me to release because if they wanted to, you know, they could have just kept me there, kept me on the shelf, and and uh, that would not have been nice. So I'm very thankful that they did release me and gave me this opportunity to go and fight elsewhere. Officially, when were you released? Uh, so officially, just when I tweeted, that's when I officially was released. Oh, wow. That's when I finally got my my papers because i didn't want to rush at this time because it has happened to me before in the past where I, I i got a feeling that i was getting released and i contacted a different promotion and asked to fight their champion i said look i'm ready to fight i'm getting released and that was agreed and then it turned down that i wasn't getting released so you know uh, it was not a good situation to be in so this time i had to make sure 100 percent that you know i am in fact getting my release and, and then i announced it do you leave with any regrets not at all, no. I had a great time uh, in the UFC. Um, you know, it, it was incredible. And to be honest, thinking thinking now, I, I think I'm in a perfect spot because I'm, I'm a free agent now, which uh, allows me to make a hell of a lot more money and fight a lot more often. And in the meantime, me and Zubaira is still the biggest fight you could make in Russia right now. So when he is back in a year's time, I mean, who is not to say that there is not an opportunity for me to go back and potentially, you know, fight there again, or LC gets released and me and him put on the fight elsewhere. You know, there is going to be many options for me down the line. So I have no regrets. I never really regret, uh, you know, doing something. I only look forward. I'm moving forward, and I cannot wait to put my hands on everyone, the boxers, the K1 guys, the MMA guys, whoever is there, whoever wants it, come and get it. So I was told that there is an offer on the table for you to fight Zubaira in, in Chechnya for a lot of money. Are you aware of this? Oh, yes, certainly. I, I'm aware of this. This offer was put to me uh, was put to me right before my fight with Michael Johnson, and I have responded to that offer uh, by saying that, uh, you know, no matter where that fight you know takes place, doesn't matter, I'm willing to, to fight uh, Zubaira on on whatever notice in any place in the world and, and and not only that but and i will say this one more time this fight to me is very important it's not about money it's not about anything else it's about honor it's about respect it's about making it right so i said this in my initial response uh, and i will say it again that from that fight particular i will donate every single cent to children's charity and i will say that again now Okay, so you, you, every cent that you make from that fight, you, you said that you're going to give to children's charity? Yeah, my full purse, I'm giving it to children's charity. Because the reason I say that, because when it was put to me, you know, there was there was talks of, oh, we'll give you more money if we do this or this, and I just wanted to let it be known that this is not about money to me. I will take that fight in a heartbeat in any organization, in any place on this planet or the moon or anywhere else in the universe, and I don't want to make any money from this. This is, this is about something else. So... We'll see what happens. To the best of your knowledge, do you think that he will fight while under suspension? I have no idea, to be honest. I have no idea. I mean, why, why, I mean if he wants to, why, why doesn't he then leave and, and, and we put it on uh, right now? You know, I, I don't mind that turn of, of events, but I, I don't know. Will he leave? Will he not leave? I have no information on that. Okay, so now that you are a free agent and it's been out there for six days, are you getting a lot of offers? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I, I mean, I, I, if I'm honest, I did expect to get a lot of offers, uh, but 
I mean, it, it's been quite overwhelming, if I'm honest. The, the, the numbers have hit six digits pretty quickly, and that's where I'm at at the moment. Uh, I mean, whoever pays more, that's where I'm going to go. You know, once you've been to the UFC as a fighter, you know, you've kind of reached the pinnacle of the sport. So right now, it's all about money to me. I mean, certainly, you know, certain names of promotion, this and that, they do play a certain part, but mainly it's about money now. And are these offers from not only MMA promotions, but MMA kickboxing and or boxing? Yeah, it, it's everywhere. Yeah, there's been, you know, K1, kickboxing, uh, MMA, uh, boxing offers. There's there's a lot of offers on the table, you know. And, and to be honest, ideally I want to sign them all because with me, you don't have to worry about me getting injured or not showing up. I will show up every damn time. If I said that I'm going to be there, I'm going to be there. Even if you line up fights for me every single weekend for the next 10 years, I will be at every single one of them. So so I have a feeling that I could potentially strike uh, numerous contracts, you know, one for boxing, one for K1, and one for MMA. Uh, and we can all, you know, uh, come to an agreement, you know, where perhaps if I have something already lined up, I'm not taking a fight in the next certain number of days or prior to that fight or whatever, but, you know, I certainly want to uh, test myself in all those fields. And so, okay, so would it be fair to say, though, I understand that you want, you know, contracts in those three sports, but first things first, get the MMA deal. Is that is that the one that you want to focus on the most? And then kickboxing slash boxing, is that gravy? Uh, to be honest, no, I, I'm putting I'm I'm uh, putting them all up against each other. Do you know what I mean? Wow. And I'm I'm seeing who who was who was what, and uh, you know because it doesn't. I don't have to fight all those sports. I don't have to. I would love to, and I love to fight. You know, I love K1. You know that those are real fights. You know, you show you watch watch their shows. You know, it's 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 proper knocks every time. But they have no. They have no stars. They have nobody really there. People don't really know any names from that sport. So uh, I feel I could cross over nicely. Boxing as well. Look at the state the bo boxing is in right now. There is no one. There is no names. All the all the guys that have a Mayweather packer, they're all retiring. They're all old, and there is not really that much of the young talent coming up. So I could definitely slot in there as well. Um, and MMA, of course. I mean, I've been I've been making a lot of noise in the MMA world for many years now, and I will continue to do so. So let's see how it goes. I saw on Twitter that you you uh, you sent a message to Amir Khan and Pauli Malinaji. Do, do you ever hear back from from their representatives? Um, no, I was actually talking today to my management at Gagarin Sports Management, and uh, and uh, they said nothing been from them just yet. But um, I'm, I'm still hoping, you know, who knows? Now being on your show, I mean, let's be honest. How many people, read, uh, you know, leave the company and, and that becomes news? I mean, here I am on ESPN, on the biggest uh, MMA show in the world, discussing me leaving the UFC and all the opportunities that I have. You know, and, and, and that's, that's what counts, you know. What counts is how many people are watching your fights. And when I fight, everyone watches. Listen, Artem, as you know, you don't need me to tell you this, but, you know, people can say it's tongue-in-cheek. People care about you. And what I like about you is that the whole goat thing, you, you take it in stride, you get it. But at the end of the day, you recognize that people actually write about your fights, watch your fights, care about your fights. So you don't really seem to care that people call you the goat and all that and, and seem to take shots at you. As long as they watch, that's all you care about, it seems. Am I right? Absolutely, and, and, and that's what determines. I mean, what, what, what do you call success in our sport? Like, what determines success? I mean, are you successful if, let's say, you're 10-0 and 0 and no one is watching your fights? Is that success? Trust me, your bank account will say otherwise. So, you know, now that I've been in the sport for so long, I, I know this now more than ever. What success is, how many people are watching your fight. If no one is watching, doesn't matter what else you're achieving. You're not successful. If people are watching your fights, if they care about what you do, you know, then that's success to me. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm one of the most successful fighters in the world. It seems like SBG has a good relationship with Bellator. Have you talked to them yet? I saw you tweet uh, 50 Cent and, and talk about Bellator. Have you talked to that organization yet? Yeah, uh, certainly. They were one of the first you know, to give me an offer. Oh. Um, we have very, very good offer as well, uh, and I'm just um, I'm, I'm right now sort of collecting all the offers. Well, not myself, of course. Like I said, my management, you know, and Gaga in uh, sports, uh, they're just considering all the offers. Um, you know, no offer is too big or too small. So everyone who else is out there, send them all my way, and then we we'll see what happens. How close are you to signing one of your deals? Uh, well, th this has only been the first couple of days, uh, you know, since I announced my. 
uh, departure from the UFC. So a lot of the offers are, you know, uh, at an early stage. I feel that there is a lot more there, even though the offers are already looking pretty good. So we'll see how it goes. You know, I mean, if someone wants to offer me a seven-digit, you know, uh, number right now, I'm I'm happy to sign straight away and let let's call it a day. Forget all the discussions you can have. Uh, you know, the Russian hammer. Uh, making all of your fans scream, whoever uh, uh, organization decides to do that. If not, how, we how, keep going with the... Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no, it's all good. Go ahead, go ahead. How uh, close are we to seven figures at this point? Um, not, 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 not as close as I would like to be, uh, but, you know, who knows? Uh, I, I was very far from the six digits when I was in the UFC. I left, and here I am already on six digits right away. So, you know, give it another... A year or so, and, and uh, we will be on seven digits, I have a feeling. Does it kind of make you wish you left the UFC earlier, if this kind of money was out there waiting for you? Uh, not at all. You know, I, I enjoyed fighting in the UFC. They have, uh, it's, you know, all things, it's a great organization to be part of. Like, let's be honest, you know, from 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 the very, very beginning, the moment you get the fight assigned, you know, you're literally, like, taken and led all the way. I'm very, very thankful to all the staff that uh, that work for the UFC. They have made each and every single experience of dealing with the UFC great, amazing. You know, they're a family. And you see it straight away. You can see that it is a good kind of company to work for in that sense because you see all the same staff working since my day one in the UFC till now. Even the company was sold and still the same people remained. So... You know, it's it's a great you know it's a family. UFC is a family, and it was great for me to be part of that. But you know, I still look forward to this new chapter in my life. Just curious, also, Artem. I know you weren't a part of it, but what did you make of Nevada's punishments last week? Uh, first and foremost, for your friend Conor McGregor getting six months and a fifty thousand dollar fine. Did you feel like that was just? Um. Uh, to be honest, it is what it is. Now it's it's kind of hard to say. I'm, I'm not a judge. I'm not a lawyer. I, I don't think, you know, uh, if you're not the person starting something, then I don't think you should be punished. I mean, that should be considered self-defense. I mean, well, you, you have to respond to so what you just stand there and what, do, you know what I mean, just let them, I, I let the whole thing unfold. You know, I mean, it was a chaos in there. So you could understand that, you know, Conor had to react. But, you know, it is what it is now. Let's just move forward. Let's just put all this behind us and uh, everyone serve their, their uh, punishments and, and let's settle it in the cage where, where we should have settled it in the first place. And I couldn't agree more, but just curious, the one-year suspension for Zubaira and, and, uh, and Abu Bakr, did you feel like that was too much? Um, all things considered, I mean, it is probably the, the right decision, you know, you know, especially given the fact that if, if you're giving Connor six months, well, then you have to give them more. Mm. Given, them, I mean, they, they they just jumped in from outside; they weren't even part of the fight. So you should definitely, you know, give them more. And to be honest, they, they I mean, they should consider the same lucky anyway, because if Connor had press charges, they would have been looking at jail time. So I don't think it's that severe of a punishment for them. It's I think it's fair. I think it's just. How soon do you want to return? Like in an ideal world, when would you fight again? Honest to God, Ray Earl, that's, that's, that was a, probably one of the biggest uh, reasons I, 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 I left, is that the fact that I absolutely love fighting. I mean, I put all things aside, I actually just love fighting. I want to be fighting all the time, and I used to do that on a regular basis. I remember someone counted uh, how often I used to fight, and on average I used to fight every 41 days. So for me to go from fighting every month pretty much to, to not really fighting at all or fighting once a year, that, that was just killing me. And I have to be realistic as well. I'm 32 years old, you know. I, I'm not getting any younger. I'm in my prime right now, so I want to be fighting all the time. I don't want to be, you know, sitting on the bench and, and just looking out there. So, so I hope to fight very soon. I hope to fight. Let's fight next week. Let's fight the week after, whenever. Show me that contract. Let's get all this annoying stuff out of the way and let's get to the fun stuff the fights how many more years do you want to do this for um as long as, I, as my body allows me you know there's one thing i kind of said to myself the moment i feel that i'm not improving anymore that i've taken it deep and i'm and i'm, I'm on my way down because of age or injuries or whatever the reason might be i will be honest with myself and i will retire i will hang them up 
but until I'm still, I feel I'm still improving and I'm getting better, uh, I will keep on fighting. Uh, and I see the improvements all the time. I mean, look at it. In my last fight, I went toe to toe with number 10, with, with the top 10 guy in the world in a weight class above mine, that he was a uh, top 10 guy in a weight class above mine. And, and look, I've done well. It was toe-to-toe, -to -toe. it was even, it was 1-1-1 one, one, one going into the third round, and he just stole it by, by a takedown. So, of course, I'm excited to see what, what the future holds. I'm excited to see how good I can get. I'm excited to see how people do against me when they cannot take me down. I mean, what is the boxer going to do? Tell me one fight that I lost because of a stand-up. It's always been the takedowns. A guy takes me down and then lays on top of me. That's the only reason I ever lost a fight. So imagine now in boxing when they cannot take me down. Imagine K1 when they cannot take me down. What are they going to do then? I love I, it. I, I think I'll do really well. In the end, Artem, are you surprised that even, you know, you're on this losing streak, but still it seems like you're more popular than ever? Does that surprise you? Um, you know, but, but that's, that's, again, that's coming back to this. You know, people love to hate, so they find a way to kind of try and get under your skin or your loss or your this and that. But truly, when they're sitting at home watching my fight, they know that this motherfucker brings it every time, and it's a competitive fight every single time. And, and those are the fights that you want to see. You know, nobody wants to see them padded record fights where, where the guy just, you know, falls over in fucking 10 seconds. And to be honest with me, with you, I, I hate when, when fighters do that because I feel like you're cheating the, you're cheating the, 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 the guys that pay your salary. You, you're cheating the fans. You know, they're watching this fake fight. They paid money for it, and, I, and it's not a real fight. You know, they never have to worry about that with me. You know, I, I love my fans. They support me. And, and, and as a thank you, I always give them the best fights that they can possibly see, a real fight. Is there a part of you, Artem, that is happy about being outside of the UFC because now you can no longer hear the, oh, you're just here because of Conor McGregor. You're now on your own path. It has nothing to do with him, and you don't have to hear that anymore? No, I, I didn't mind that at all, and, and I will still say it again. Yes, I was in the UFC. The big part of me being in the UFC was the fact that I, I was uh, was the fact that I'm Connor's friend. Of course, it was. And I'm not denying it. But towards the end, that was not that was not the the reason anymore. And look at look at any other fight. Look at even my last fight. Like I said, I was the co-main event, and you didn't really hear much about the main event. All you heard was people talk about my fight. So, and everyone sees that, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, again, UFC, they only make money if people are watching their fights and people watch my fights. So that means they make money. And if they make money, everyone else makes money. So uh, I am happy to be out of the UFC, but not for the reasons that you mentioned. Ariel. Artem, pleasure as always, my friend. Uh, congrats on a great run, making a lot of noise, getting a lot more fans. I remember when I first met you, uh, several years ago, you were trying to get that fight, I do believe, against Dennis Seaver, and a lot of people here in America didn't know who you were, and you were with uh, your coach, John Kavanaugh, uh, in Las Vegas, getting ready for uh, one of Connor's fight. I think it was UFC 178, uh, and you were campaigning very hard to take that fight on a week's notice. Well, now everyone knows who you are around the world. going to be very interesting to see who you sign with, how many deals you get. Please do keep us posted, and thank you, as always, for coming on the show to keep us updated. I absolutely will. Thank you so much for having me on the show, Ariel. It was great being on ESPN for the first time ever. I look forward to being on it many, 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 many more times for many, many, many more years. I'm going to take over this game. I don't give up. I never will. I'm going to keep on fighting. As long as my heart is beating, I ain't quitting. Thank I you look so forward much. to it. Thank you, Artem. There he is, the Russian hammer himself, Artem Lobov, stopping by, giving us an update on his fighting future.